We've all seen the ring cameras that can alert you when someone's at the door, but those cameras have a pretty glaring limitation. What are you gonna do when someone's at the door? It's time for the door to answer you. I'm building a robot to patrol my house and greet some visitors. I'm also gonna set up a camera system that's gonna let this robot know when people have arrived. Instead of designing my own robot from scratch, I bought a kid's electric ATV from the Facebook Marketplace, and this project was already off to a great start when the mom selling this ATV was wondering why a guy in his 20s was buying a kid's toy despite not having any kids himself. To get the ATV ready, I stripped off all of the plastic panels, the handlebars, and all of the electronics except for the motor. Eventually, I'll mount a paintball turret on it, but I haven't decided how I want to mount it yet. For the steering, I was initially inspired by steering used in rowing boats. It was very easy and cheap to create since it was effectively two cables and a piece of wood. The problem with this design is it limited the steering radius since the cables weren't perfectly parallel. I first tried fixing this with two parallel tie rods, but after talking with a friend who knows much more about this than I do, I changed it to just one tie rod. This setup puts a lot less wear on the servo, so it should last longer. Now that I have a working steering system, it's time to get this thing moving. The first test went well, and everything calibrated easily. In this clip, I'm using a 12-volt battery, but eventually this thing will get a whole lot zippier when I switch it over to a 24-volt battery. To make this guy move, I'm using a Pixhawk Autopilot. The Pixhawk power unit can take a wide voltage range, which is nice for testing because it let me start on a cheaper 12 volt battery before I upgraded to 24 volt batteries. And then once I upgraded, all I had to do was swap out the speed controller for a 24 volt speed controller, and everything else stayed the same. Everything is in a Tupperware container for some light weatherproofing. The antenna sticking out of the Tupperware lets me control the rover from my laptop. For emergencies, I also added this sensor that looks kind of like a buzz droid. So this sensor is a LiDAR sensor that can see about 15 meters away, but during the day, and especially in the bright Florida sun, it's not actually going to be able to see nearly that far. The camera here is the actual eyes of the rover. The cool thing about it is that it actually has multiple cameras, so it has depth perception that works pretty much just like our eyes. It also has an AI accelerator, which will help us detect and track people, and then avoid crashing into them. Now it's time to configure the emergency sensor. As expected, it sort of works, but the bright sunlight is making it a little unreliable. The sensor also had some issues at speed, which I'll eventually look into. It could be due to vibration, the sun, or something else. Not really worried because the rover is not going to be running at full speed anyway when it's on its own, and ideally the sensor won't be used at all. And if it is, it's probably going to be when it's dark outside and the main camera can't see anything, so a lot of these issues won't be as big of a deal. Setting the stopping distance to two meters worked pretty well. The issue in the sun seemed to be a delay in getting the distance rather than just getting an inaccurate distance because at a certain speed, the two meter threshold was no longer enough to stop the ATV. Now that he's not gonna blindly run into things, I decided to send the rover on his first mission. For this first mission, I gave him four waypoints to scout out. And as you can see, the little guy completed his first mission with flying colors. I'm sure you've heard someone say, I'm not a programmer, so this code is horrible. Well, I am a programmer, so my mechanical designs are just as bad as my code. The tie rod system worked better than the cables, and it worked better than the initial parallel tie rod system, but the servo gears still ended up wearing out. Thankfully, I found a way to use a chain-based system that works much better. So even though this was technically a failure, it was also a great opportunity to upgrade the rover to 24 volts. The new steering motor runs on 24 volts, and it also has a sensor that's hooked up right to the steering shaft, so it knows exactly how far it needs to turn the wheel, and it can turn the wheel evenly in each direction. Plus, we get to use this large sprocket. I originally called it a gear, but my friend Mike informed me it's actually a sprocket. This thing is really heavy, and it feels like it'd be pretty fun to throw. Kind of reminds me of the saw blades in Half-Life 2 on the Ravenholm level.
Look how well that works. The new motor can effortlessly turn our steering sprocket and should last a long time. Now the ATV can fully turn the wheels in either direction so it has a much tighter turn radius. Now it's time to test the camera. So we have this camera right here. That's gonna be our depth camera. And to test it, I have two boxes, three boxes. We have our main box right there, which is a little bit shorter than the Rover. We have a side box right there, which is probably about half the height. And then this one, which is a little bit shorter than that box. So these two side boxes are about the width of the Rover. So theoretically, it could clear that distance, but I don't really want to try because one wrong move or even like slight miss angle, and then you're not going to fit. It won't go all the way through. And then on the laptop right here, we have it connected to the camera. And so we're going to have seven zones. We have our two primary zones in the front, two sides or four side zones, two on each side, and then a top zone, which should cover where it could fit through, but I don't really want it to try because I might put stuff on top or something could fall or whatever. Uh, it's something to note. So these zones all are averaging based on what's in the area. So that's why you can see even though um, for the front box in the center there, the two zones are covering the box, but one is closer and the other is further. And then on the top, of course, it goes even further. Eventually we'll need uh, to do something else. Basically, we're gonna use that as kind of general information on where all the stuff is. And then we're gonna run more processing on the Raspberry Pi because basically all of this zone calculation is done on the camera. It has its own CPU. So that's saving processing power on the Pi. So we'll use that general help to know, okay, we have something more or less at this distance. And then if it gets to a certain threshold, say like two meters, we can do a more advanced calculation to make sure that nothing is gonna to be too close. Cause as it is right now, if say that box were to be on its side, facing that way, then the average distance would of course increase by a lot because suddenly that box is gonna take up a lot less space in the zone. Okay, so I have a theory. Since this guy is not going super fast, but he's pulling super hard, pretty sure he's gonna be able to tow me. So let's give it a go. That last test made it pretty clear to me that our power issue isn't really a power issue. It's just how this gearbox is set up. I don't really know that much about gears, so I don't want to mess with it yet. And this guy doesn't need to go super fast unless I want to do something crazy, which is possible in the future. But for now, I'm pretty happy with how he's performing and it's time to get the uh, other parts of this assembled. So all the parts for the turret have arrived. And coincidentally, I just saw I Did A Thing's video where they built a paintball security system too. So originally, I was going to have just one extrusion like this in the center and mount the paintball gun like so, but their setup was like this, with the paintball gun mounted right in the middle like that. And that method's probably gonna work a lot better. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so I've got the turret more or less mounted now. Uh, the paintball gun isn't on it yet, but the actual assembly that will hold the paintball gun is on it.
So as you can see, just give it a good spin and it spins pretty well. Uh, I already know that it's going to be a little interesting having this where it is because there will be a lot of torque on this bar. But I have a plan for if this goes wrong. So if it goes wrong, it's okay. I'll just do a little bit more of a sturdier design. But I have pretty high confidence that it'll be okay. So we'll see. After putting together most of the frame, I decided to do a test with the horizontal servo and it was able to smoothly rotate. The chain is a little loose here, but that will get tightened later. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out how to mount this. My gut instinct is I'm gonna drill through here, but I don't know what's in here. Uh, and I don't really wanna take this one apart in case I don't know how to get it back together or just parts of it aren't really working. Uh, so basically, assuming I can drill there, we're gonna have this guy basically right there, cut right around there with a hole for the shaft, basically like right here-ish. Uh, and then through the power of the Facebook Marketplace guy having two of these, they're not quite the same model. I'm gonna take this one apart because it's not electronic. Uh, and so if I break it, I don't really care. There is an extra thing here, so it's not gonna be the exact same, but I can't find anything online about this guy. It's just some generic one, so. I'm just gonna send it and see what happens. Okay, so my initial hunch was right. These things are actually a lot simpler than I thought. So basically, the only thing the trigger does is drop down this little metal bar, which is actually really nice because that means at some point I can probably get rid of this whole mechanism and make this a whole lot more compact, uh, but that's not gonna happen right now. So luckily for us, since there's no safety, I should be good to drill right through this. Uh, and I'm gonna take this trigger off, possibly with a chain breaker or something. I tried just popping that pin out, but it wouldn't go. So uh, we'll see. Okay, so I had to salvage a nine volt battery from my stud finder because the nine volt battery I salvaged from something else uh, was also dead. But I found something interesting. So I figured out how to power it on. And then lo and behold, I thought that was just a black strip of tape or something. Turns out it's actually a screen, uh, and I don't know how well it's going to come across here, but there's a little to tell you that it's on safety, because I don't think that this screen would be visible with the solid grip that was on the other side. So I don't know, it's probably just for debugging, but anyway, we can go from safety to turbo to auto, which I don't know what the difference between any of these modes are. Semi. Multi, which I'm assuming is like a three round burst, this tries. That was like a five round burst, but okay. Turbo. Oh, and look at that. There's a, there's a shot counter to tell you how many shots have been fired from this. But here we go. And then I've also drilled three holes right here and then they're gonna mount onto these plates, which will mount onto this guy, which will in turn mount on the shaft, like that, and then that's all going up there. Time for assembly. Okay, so I just got the paintball gun mounted. Uh, I ended up choosing a bigger sprocket right here just to give the servo a bit more of an advantage just because the paintball gun is kind of heavy and since this thing is going to be moving at some point i don't want to wear out the gears on this servo too quickly lesson learned from before but now i just have to actually hook up all the computer components and get this thing working Alrighty, here's the turret hooked up and moving around I'm using a servo tester to control it for now, but eventually it's gonna be controlled from the Raspberry Pi. Now that all the mechanical parts are ready to go, it's time to start coding. In the next video, I'm gonna be working on a smart home surveillance system, as well as the targeting system for the turret. Once the code is ready, I'll be conducting some human trials with my friends to see how well my code works. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.